Hi, my name is Connie Godfrey, and I'm the coordinator of Black Hills Online Learning Community here at the Thai Office. Today, I want to share with you some tips and tricks that I've learned in Outlook that save me time and help keep me a little bit organized. It's important to note that I don't use Office 365, so if that's the platform you use and you were hoping to learn some tips about that, I'm sorry this isn't the recording for you. But if you use Outlook, the regular Outlook, Hopefully I'll be able to teach you something new today. The first thing I want to go over is automatic replies um, and I actually have them turned on right now. So if you want an email to be sent to everybody that sends you an email when you're out, you can come here to file, automatic replies. You will say, yes, you want to send automatic replies during this time period. Mine have actually been on since 12.15 today, and they will end next Tuesday at 6 p.m. because I'll be back in the office on Wednesday, and anybody who sends me an email after that time probably isn't expecting a reply from me. And we'll come down here, type the verbiage that we want to send, be sent back to people, and this tab is inside my organization. The next tab is for people outside my organization that email me. And I'll say OK and get out. And then this box will be highlighted. And you'll notice your inbox will also have a flag showing that. Then when somebody emails you, they will get this reply. The next thing I want to talk about is creating rules. At the beginning of the school year, I get a lot of emails with registrations for new students and new courses. Sometimes they clog up my inbox and I don't want to lose any of them, so I want them kept nice and neat in a folder so I can get back to them. And then my regular emails that I get also are nice and neat in my inbox here. So to create a rule, We'll come to create rule. Uh, let's go back. Let's come to this one. We'll create rule. I'm going to say every email that comes in that the subject contains test one. I want that to go to a different folder where I can get back to it. I want to move this to my Tech Tuesday folder and say OK. Then a box will come up. Do I want to run this rule on new messages already in my inbox? Yes, I do. If I don't click that, it will just be every email that comes in after that. I'm going to hit OK. And something went wrong. Let's try this again. I want to create a rule. The subject line is test one. I want to send that to my Tech Tuesday folder. Say OK. Yes, I want to run this rule. And there it was, it moved. So now in my Tech Tuesday folder, I will have those test one emails. Come back here. The next feature that I use a lot is some search tools. I'm sure we've all looked for emails that we know we got and we just can't seem to find it again. If we come to search here, and I know I've got some emails. I'm looking for a specific email from my colleague Julie. If I come in here, up here at the top there's some search filters that we can use. I want to say from. I know the email is from. Let me backtrack a little bit there. If I just go into the search box and say I want to find my email from Julie Erickson and hit OK, I will get every email that 
has Julie either uh, CC'd in or has her in the subject or in the body of the e email and that gets mm -hmm. pretty cumbersome. So if we come back up here to the search box, I want to filter for emails from Julie Erickson because I know she sent it to me. Let's go Julie Erickson. Then I'll get every email that Julie has sent me that is still in my inbox. Okay, that's still a lot and I'm still not sure where I'm gonna find that one. I know that she sent me the email about Tech Tuesday and that's what I'm looking for. If I hit subject, I can say I know it was about Tech Tuesday. You can add that. That then filters again for every email that has Tech Tuesday in it. And then I know that the email that I'm looking for has an attachment because she sent me the directions. I can click has attachments and that filters it down to just three emails. Certainly I can find the one that I'm looking for in that. So there is searching. The next tool I don't use in the office, but I do use it at home on my Outlook account, which is being overrun by spam right now. So sometimes if you say unsubscribe, that lets them know that, hey, let's just send her an email from another address or domain that they have. So if you come up here by delete, there's a junk tab and you can block that sender. Then they don't even make it into your inbox. So again, I don't use that at work because I don't want to block an email and then find out I actually do need need emails from that person or that place again, but I do use it at home. So there's blocking senders trying to limit your junk mail. Um, if you're like me, sometimes you have to schedule meetings with colleagues and if you're not all together and you can't decide on a date and time that works for all of you, but you really want to get this meeting scheduled, you can check their schedule even if they haven't shared, shared it with you. To do that, let's come to calendar. off of here and just have my calendar. Let's say on April 20th, I would like to schedule a meeting. Okay, I'm just say meeting in my office. I want to hopefully have this meeting on Friday the 20th at 8 and we can be done by 8.30 because it'll be quick. And I want to invite, invite attendees. So I can just add them and then wait to hear back that yes, this works for some, but not for others. Or I can use the scheduling assistant and hopefully find out, get a little bit better idea of who's going to be available. So we'll click scheduling assistant. I'm gonna type everybody who's going to be in the meeting. So I'll add myself. Then I'm going to add my colleague, Julie Erickson. And we can see now that on the 20th, she's busy from 12 to 2.30, maybe 10.30 to 11.30 to 2.30. But it looks like she's free at eight. So I feel safe that I can go ahead and schedule that meeting for her. So then I will say um, Oops, I don't need to add a room. We can come back here to the appointment. It will go to me and Julie it's in my office, it looked like she was free, and we'll hit send. And then she will get the invitation that she can accept or deny. Let's just go ahead and delete that because I don't want to schedule that. Okay, then let's go back to my inbox. And the next feature 
is something I just recently learned and I think I'm going to use it a lot. Let's suppose we're starting a new email and you often find yourself typing the same verbiage over and over again. You can add some saved text to that. I have one saved right now and if I start typing test, it will come up with my saved text, testing, testing, testing. I can press enter and there it is. To do that, I will come to my, another way to do it is come up here to insert, insert quick parts, and here's some other saved ones that I have. Um, if I do my closing, I can click on that and it will already say, let me know if you have questions, have a great day, Connie. If we wanna do a new one, I will type the text that I want to be saved, highlight it, come up to quick text. I can save this selection to my gallery. I'm gonna name it and I will name it my Tech Tuesday and say okay. Then every time I email that, it doesn't wanna come up automatically for me there, but I can come up here, insert, quick parts, and there it is, and it will enter it there for me. I look forward to adding a lot more in my gallery on that one. Okay, I know most computers have sticky note features already in them, but if you primarily work out of your Outlook account like I do, you can actually use sticky notes right here in the program. So down by the calendar of your contacts, you can come to notes and it has sticky notes right there for you. You can create a new note and there it is. And if your desk is anything like mine, you I have sticky notes all over it. So I hope to start using these a little bit more and clear my desk a little bit. Um, let's see here. Let's come back to my email. Another one is tasks. And it's sort of like my to-do list. So I have a list of my to-do list or some important information that I want to keep. Maybe I have some phone numbers here or some passwords. Um, I just keep them in my tasks. I can click here to add a new task and say, don't forget the Thai conference. And there it is. Go back to our inbox one more time. Another feature is your signature line. And many of you probably already have one saved signature line, but suppose you send to a certain group or you want to send specific text, text to everyone when you send a certain email, um, and you don't want to add it each time. You can create many signatures, or if you have two separate roles in your office and you want to differentiate on your signature line, which role you're uh, replying to or sending to, you can come up, create a new email. My signature um, always pops up on my new emails. It's set that way, but we can come up here and enter it there, and it's already there. Um, I created a sample one for us, so let's say when I reply to emails about registration or people that want to know about registration for my online program, I can do my registration signature. And that, I just added uh, this verbiage and some links, and that one I probably don't want to send to every email that I replied or that I send, but when I talk about registration, I can have it added there. To add a new signature, we'll come back up here, signatures, and you can create a new one. I'm gonna cancel.
cancel that. Cancel that. I don't want to save my changes. Come back here. And the last tip that I want to share with you is delegating your Outlook account to somebody else. If I'm going to be gone for an extended period of time, but I want my I want somebody to be able to check my emails and answer any that need attention before I get back, I can come to File again, Account Settings, and here we have an option to delegate access. Let's say add. This comes up with my internal address book. I'm going to choose my colleague Julie again. Here she is. I will add her and say OK. Then I have the option to uh, give her certain permissions. So on my calendar, I want her to be an editor. I want her to be able to read, create, and modify items. If I only wanted her to review them so she can let people know if I'm available, um, I can change it to that, but I want her to have full access. Um, I can choose that for my tasks. For my inbox, let's give her access to be an editor on my inbox. Then we'll say, Okay, and then if I click OK again, she's going to get an email saying, hey, you now have access to Connie's Outlook account. And to access that, I'm not going to send it, but to access that, she can be working in her account. And then when it's time to check mine, come here to file, and there will be an option here to switch user. She can switch user, and then it comes up with my account that she can manipulate. I think that sums up the tips and tricks that I was hoping to share with you today. I hope that you learned something new and something that you'll be able to use. If you have any questions or if there's something that I didn't touch on, shoot me an email at cgodfrey at ty.net. And if I don't know the answer, I'll look it up and get right back to you. I appreciate your time today. Thanks for joining me and have a great day.